Good morning, everybody. Uh, nice day today. A bit warm, but lovely. Uh, again, thank you for joining us on this Saturday, 1st of August, new month. Uh, I think it's looking slightly better out there also. Uh, Dr. Prem is here. Uh, just a, a word of introduction about Dr. Prem. Dr. Prem Narsiman uh, is an elder specialist, uh, works at Just Look Hospital and, and uh, is trained to work with the elderly, with the people, with, with elders, not only on the physical, but also their mental aspects, a more holistic uh, approach to healing the elders. Uh, what I will do is, while he is talking, I will, uh, on the chat, write to you guys on how you can contact him uh, by email, in case you ever do. Uh, without further ado, I will uh, ask Dr. Prem Rasiman to uh, take the uh, stand. Uh, I will be muting everybody while he speaks and once he finishes, uh, you can unmute, ask your questions um, and uh, have a conversation with the doctor. Uh, so therefore, uh, doctor, uh, over on to you. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody. So it's really yeah. nice to come back on this Saturday and to talk about something which really, I think, bothers a lot of uh, older adults. And that is uh, the issue of pain. Pain and living with chronic pain. So as far as pain is concerned, pain is quite common experience for older adults. And the thing is pain might uh, disrupt the daily routines and it might get worsened with age. Unfortunately, sometimes what happens is pain is purely poorly evaluated and it's not managed well in older people as well. So, but that does not mean we actually suffer in pain uh, chronically. So we should we should get a handle on it because pain management actually helps you in living healthier, being more active, and it will also help you in having uh, actually a normal social life because ultimately pain can make you really distressed and you wouldn't want to do things, you wouldn't want to go out, you wouldn't want to sort of have an active life now the causes of pain usually can be some chronic conditions like joint diseases it could be uh, osteoarthritis it could be the rheumatoid arthritis then diabetic neuropathy that is usually in diabetes when there is the damage of the nerves which is caused by diabetes then foot ulcers and certain skin problems foot ulcers can be very painful then there is something known as shingles shingles is very very painful as far as older people are concerned. Then oral problems, dental problems. And then there is poor circulation in the legs. So that is known as a peripheral vascular disease. Then sometime after a stroke also, there can be severe pain after cancer. And then certain muscle diseases. Then bone conditions like when there is uh, osteoporosis, that is the uh, bone health is not good. It can be really painful. And of course, inflammatory diseases or blood vessels or the joints and blood vessels that is obviously known as temporal arthritis so that can that can also be very very painful the usual symptoms depend upon how basically one is location of the pain what is the intensity how bad is your pain are you able to do activities due to the pain how often do you feel the pain how long the pain lasts and what is important is what soothes it or what makes it worse. Now, pain in older people who actually have dementia can be more and more difficult. So as a caregiver, we have to look for restlessness, irritability, resistance, crying, moaning. We have to look for limping, then pain, facial expressions, refusal to eat, disturbed sleep. So when somebody has dementia, the way of looking at pain will be difficult because they might actually ex uh, express it in various ways. Now, we obviously try to evaluate pain. So we, we try to ask what type of pain you have, whether it is burning, aching. Then we try to ask about your health history, what diseases you have, whether you have had any injuries, any disabilities. Then depending on past experiences, it's very important that we get an entire list of medications. A strong physical examination is also very, very important. And if needed, we will do some scans. Now, usually we try to use some pain scales, which will help us to know how bad the pain is. For example, the most simplest one is when we will ask you, 
that on a number of 0 to 10, the 10 being the maximum, 0 being no pain, how much will be of pain? So how do you take care of pain? Now the take care of pain might actually require a multidisciplinary approach in which it will not be only maybe the geriatrician, maybe the pain person will also be needed and also sometimes physiotherapists, uh, then also the orthopedicians, for example, if you have specific conditions related to the joint. Now treatment and medications, as you must be knowing, the most commonly prescribed and which is very safe in older people is actually uh, paracetamol. Of course, if you have kidney disease, liver disease, it's difficult to give you. Then there is something known as NSAIDs. NSAIDs like aspirin, then naproxen, diclofenac. These are some things which are quite a risk of kidney damage and also heart disease. So then we usually don't give it very, very frequently. Then of course, opioids, opioids like, uh, like tremadol, that can be given in case of very severe pain, but they have side effects like nausea, constipation, memory disturbances. So, so we also, we always ask whether the older people have had any issues. Then also for pain, we give uh, additional things like, like sprays, uh, like creams. Uh, we also give, sometimes we might actually have to give steroids, especially directly in, inject into the joints. Then another thing is we need to actually know whether there is an adequate relief or not. So we keep doing the pain scale and we keep asking you whether there has been any improvement. Then the other things include non-pharmacological approaches to tackle pain. This could be hot or cold skin applications. Then relaxation techniques will help us meditation, then deep breathing exercises, yoga, then massage. Then exercise and physical therapy is important. Then diversion such as music, then storytelling sessions are there, then television is there. Sometimes pet therapy can be obviously employed. Then things like giving injections and also cognitive behavioral therapy sometimes has to be uh, uh, given to older people who we have to actually help in coping strategies. Now it's very important as a caregiver that we are in touch with the family members and we are also in touch with the uh, basically with the doctors as a caregiver where we are able to know that what their pain is whether they are actually depressed because of that whether they have lost self-confidence and it's very important to monitor pain so if the pain is not improving then it has to be informed to your healthcare provider so that either drugs or non-pharmacological methods can be employed and strategies can be changed for the for the pain to be managed now as always uh, it's not always pain management will be with drugs and other things there are things like lifestyle and management which is always sort of emphasized so active lifestyle is very important diet and exercise is very very important you have to maintain your energy so that you have are able to carry out the normal activities of daily living so that your muscles can be kept well you can improve your balance and also reduce the risk of falling then you as a patient should uh, take an active role in your treatment once you experience pain you should highlight it you should you should also tell whether you have any issues with the medications always there is very important is as a person do not try to increase the doses of the painkillers or try to try to uh, introduce new painkillers with you if they are if they are available over the counter without asking your doctor because it is easily said and done it is easy to do it is easy to increase the dose but then one has to take into consideration the various side effects that might actually happen and you shouldn't take that particular risk at all and as far as the caregiver is concerned the caregiver should always take care that he he or she doesn't feel that the older adult is just complaining. If there is pain, then that particular person will obviously tell you that there is pain. It is not that it is it is it is just something which is just set in. So we have to help them in relaxation, help them with physical therapy. And whenever the medicines are given, sometimes even patches have to be given which are which are releasing the uh, a pain medication and always try to believe in the person you are caring for 
because the most important thing is every person has the right to have good pain control and nobody should be in pain so it is important that we evaluate the pain and as a caregiver you should always help in taking your uh, older adults to the healthcare provider so that the amount of pain can actually be uh, at the time taken care continuously it's always level of pain sometimes when you are in chronic pain you cannot always get entire uh, i mean you cannot always get relief from pain in entirety but it is very important that you take into consideration that uh, pain can be controlled to an extent and you have to control the intensity it even if it is not entirely being controlled the reason being if it is not controlled then your quality of life your activities of doing things your activities of daily living everything will be affected so to be more independent you have to be pain free uh, so thanks a lot for your patient hearing if you have any questions or comments you can share thank you very much uh, doctor um we're opening this up for questions uh, if you could unmute yourself and ask doctor a question uh, again we'd like to avoid specific medication questions however anything generic is fine uh, so in case anybody has any questions uh, please uh, unmute yourself mm -hmm. yeah doctor doctor can you ask something can you hear me uh, hana ji i can't hear you too clearly i don't know what happened i yeah i have one uh hana ji okay i think she is by mistake logged off so i think she's going to try logging in again i can't see her at all um uh, anybody has any other question until hana ji comes in uh yeah this is susan barton hi susan can you hear me? yeah hi sorry uh doctor i was just uh, wanting to know whether uh, cbd oil therapy is effective for pain relief in really really senior citizens ma'am i would say as far as the oil therapy and alternative alternative therapies are concerned sometimes we we do consider it but ultimately we we do it in sync with the people who are actually giving it because okay. uh, it's it's basically we just need to see whether it's causing any kind of interactions with your current medications or not if it is okay. not then of course we i mean the oil therapy can also be given but usually we try to avoid being on multiple therapies as far as oral therapies are concerned purely because we don't know which medications have interactions and uh, because uh, not always all types of medications are researched with those interactions so it becomes very very difficult okay yeah thank you uh, any other questions doctor? yeah doctor can you hear me now yes an auntie hi baba my again my this thing is my hand goes like that yeah that's why my, my finger always goes somewhere like you know when i try to do with one finger hello doctor can you hear me now dr prem yeah i am i'm fine no uh, this why we get those uh, cramps sometimes on the feet sometimes you know the toes and very painful then uh, it takes at least 5 to 7 minutes for slowly to release that pain then you can move why it happens like that yeah sometimes sometimes cramps happen it could be because of things like uh, reduced amount of magnesium or vitamin e but those cramps usually usually sort of recover so they are just that when you are resting and when you are trying to get up the muscles just go into a bit of a very mild spasm and yeah. then once you get up obviously once to release the muscles they recover of course as i told earlier in certain people the cramps can be continuous and that is uh, usually in lying down position which i had said in the when i talked about sleep so that is of course more of a restless leg syndrome or a continuous movements which happen in the leg but that is completely different these cramps because they recover in some time only usually it's just because the muscle can go into spasm for some time if it is continuously there then of course we try to treat 
Uh, no, I get, uh, I get uh, not very often, but I do get sometimes. But that is just a few minutes, like, then it becomes all right. But then that time, the toes and uh, feet all, like, like, you know, tight and quite painful. Can't move at all then. But, and that too, sometimes it happens. Okay. So if it's sometimes only, there's nothing to worry about it much. But not salt due to salt, less of salt or something. No, not sometimes, it. sometimes if your electrolytes are less, ma'am, then also it can be there. Because I don't put salt in the rice, uh, not in chapatis. Uh, no, I no, don't. You, can, you can actually have normal salt. It's not necessary that you have completely stop it. Because uh, when you age, if you go into low salt, then that becomes more dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions uh, from anybody? Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, doctor. Now you know what happened. You know, uh, you get uh, the, the certain numbness which comes in the in the toes, maybe because of the pressure. Like, you know, wearing close pair of shoes and all over a period of time, like the last three toes and all. And you find, you know, sometimes the sensation is there, but at the same, you know, it is not too comfortable and it is not causing any pain as such. But how to means uh, alleviate that uh, hardness or whatever it is? No, if you're, if you're having it just for some time, then after that, I mean, you just need to sort of maybe just rest that leg, stretch it a bit. And usually it sort of recovers. If it is not prolonged numbness because of diabetes or vitamin B12 deficiency, then of course it, it shouldn't be much of a problem. But sometimes on a lot of prolonged sitting, prolonged standing, numbness can be there, which recovers over time. So, and very short time. It's not necessary that will continue. No, doctor, what happened? You know, I used to wear clothes there when I was young. So the toes used to get all come together and the pressure would fall on the toes, especially the last three toes outward. So that is when a, you know, a little information or whatever it is over a period of time and it has become a part of my life. But the feeling is there and it's not that it is, but a little bit something different like. Is it okay? Like because of yeah, the it's fine. If it's, if it's been there for a while and it's not causing you much of a trouble, then that's okay. Okay, okay. Thank you, doctor. And doctor, can I ask you one more question? But it's not pertaining to pain. It's pertaining to the present uh, pandemic. Now, you know, we get a lot of viral uh, messages. Saying, That's the point. I will stop you there. I do not believe in viral messages at all. No, I, we want a clarification from you, yeah. sir. You know, because there is one uh, Dr. Bosley, I think so, from uh, Cooper Hospital. Or, and he's saying he's an orthopedic and then he's saying he's an uh, oncologist, he talks about inhalation, okay? Now, I want to know, uh, from uh, the medical point of view, to what extent can steam kill a virus? Because when we go out and we come back, we shouldn't panic if we don't do the inhalation. Or, what is the purpose of doing inhalation? Because I've been doing regularly for the last 10 years, to just clean up my nostrils, so that I don't get... As far as, as far as inhalation is concerned, it is always good to do it to actually clean your nostrils or to actually if you have a nose block yeah that's about it it gives you a sense of well-being and it obviously opens up your entire uh, ear nose throat area yeah but, yeah the phlegm comes out then but to say that it actually kills the virus then we wouldn't be having a pandemic <laughs> okay, okay yeah no because this gentleman is saying the virus goes and it settles in the paranasal uh, uh, area where yes. the hot water cannot reach. So then if we do the steam inhalation, the steam at 50 degrees centigrade or 60 or whatever it is he's saying, it is able to uh, deactivate the virus to some extent and it helps and our body is able to cope up and fight the infection. Now I have been going out, you know, to the bank and other things. So that is what I want to know. I come uh, home Pascal, and I have a uh, uh, yeah. Ms. Paskin, you know, this is a session for chronic pain. 
Why don't we answer all questions on chronic pain and then we'll get into it. Okay, fine. No problem. No, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Is that okay, doctor? Is that fine? Yeah, yeah that's fine. That's fine. Uh, any other questions on chronic pain for elders? So if nobody's asking, I'm going to ask one. And <laughs> like the one that I asked. So, okay, so doctor, let me ask this question. Does an elder actually have to live with pain? I hear so many, now this is my life, I have to live with it. Is that really what is going to happen? No, no, I don't think so. Because ultimately, if you have pain, you have to address the intensity of pain you have. How bad the pain is. You can always decrease the intensity. It's not that you have to always be in pain just because you have pain. You have to look at the cause try to treat them. Sometimes they're obviously handicapped in the sense, for example, if you already have an ongoing kidney disease or you also have a liver disease, then the number of pain medications that can be given have to be limited. What particularly you can give have to be limited. But that does not mean that there are not modalities which can be given for pain because pain is something which is really, really bothersome. And it can also be uh, cause for sometimes the older adult going into confusion also. Pain is an instigator of a lot of things. Current, if your current disease, for example, if I will give you an example. If your current disease, you have you have something like uh, severe OA knee and the pain intensity is very, very bad. You can't move around. It leads to depression. You get socially disconnected. So it's like a, it's like a lot of, it's like a vicious cycle. So ultimately, no, it is not right to say that you have to live with pain. The intensity of pain can always be reduced. Sometimes pain cannot be entirely changed. For example, if the knees are very bad, you are not in a state where you can do the surgery, but always we have to sort of try to address the pain because pain can be very 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 irritating it can cause you not to sleep it can affect your quality of life so even there is a 20 percent change in your quality of life the pain should be addressed thank you doctor any other questions yeah i uh, i'm going to ask another question this is uh, with regard to uh, I don't think it is pain, but numbness. I think another lady also spoke about it a few minutes before. Numbness under the feet. And uh, in relation to that, uh, there was a neurobian forte being uh, advised, prescribed for my mom. Uh, I just wanted to find out what is, are there side effects? Are there any problems associated with <coughs> With prolonged a uh, period of taking this tablet. No, as far as as far as pain, as far as numbness is concerned, there can be a lot of causes. It could be because of diabetes. It could be because of hypothyroidism. It could be because of vitamin B12 deficiency. In your mother's case, it has she has been supplemented with vitamins and neurobion port is not really harmful, so it really doesn't have a lot of side effects. Neurobion port is a vitamin. Yeah, yeah, it's a collection of vitamins that it really doesn't have any kind of side effects. Side effects. Yeah. Thanks, Doctor. Yeah. So, Doctor, a follow up question from what Susan's asking. Uh, let's say that uh, I go to a, my uh, healthcare professional, I go to my doctor, I go to my specialist, and he prescribes me a medicine that will relieve my pain or to make it lesser. Let's say it gets 50% lesser, therefore, my quality of life increases. Uh, can I continue that? Yeah, a lot of people get back to us saying that, you know, they, they can take it for three weeks, four weeks, and then they're scared that there'll be side effects. How do yeah. I know when to stop? I know talking to my doctor is one option, but can I continue taking pain medicine as long as the pain is existing? I would say as far as pain medications are concerned, most pain medications do can have side effects. So you have to be in touch with your doctor without reducing the dose or increasing the dose yourself. Uh, maximum, as far as paracetamol is concerned, if you don't have any liver disease and kidney disease, paracetamol is something which is safe. If you want, you can take a single dose and it doesn't reduce. You can get in touch with your hair care provider. But as far as intensity is concerned, you would know. For example, if you are earlier, you have been able to not able to do your usual activities, but now slowly and steadily, if you're able to do activities, depending upon where your pain is, then of course that shows you that there has actually been an improvement. 
so that is that is how you have to address pain but ultimately i would always say as far as pain medications are concerned you should never sort of uh, take a decision on your own purely because these are medications which do have side effects and if the dose is just suddenly increased or decreased it can obviously lead to other things uh thank you doctor any other questions yeah i have a last question again is that okay have... oh yes susan yeah so um i frequently find elders uh, having uh, problems with frozen shoulders i mean i think sometimes we loosely term it as frozen shoulder like you know you can't put your hand up and i have a frozen shoulder and there's aching muscles near the neck uh, i would say you know closer to cervical spondyl spondylitis i don't want to use that term because most often they don't say it they just say i have severe pain in my shoulder i'm not able to put my arm up i'm not able to put my you know unbutton my hook and stuff like that now in that kind of situation i'm also scared to ask this question how effective are chiropractors you know you have like i find a lot of elderly people who believe in uh, you know a, a, a massage a therapy uh, they massage that nerve and they release the nerve and a lot of these um, um i heard a lot of this but uh, i don't know too much about uh, you know this space so in a situation where there is pain as, uh, associated with frozen shoulder aching shoulders aching arms how does one um, i mean short of going to an orthopedic doctor and you know is there any way in which we can uh, through home remedies help them because uh, some of the elders are not even in a position where they can where they are mobile you know but yeah, they are so, in yeah yeah so in that case first of all i would say well, you wouldn't i wouldn't jump to a chiropractor directly for sure because okay. ultimately it needs to be assessed if that older person cannot come to the hospital which a lot of people cannot then it has to be i mean in a normal time of course the doctor could obviously visit in this time you can obviously show on a video and another thing is it they need a proper physiotherapy assessment as well purely because when you do not know what the condition is then directly going to chiropractory removing the nerves see we are playing we are playing around with muscles and nerves because over correction under correction a deformity an impingement if it happens the other way then it can cause more harm than actually gain so that's why i always feel i mean as far as pain is concerned and things with joints are concerned always it's better that a detailed doctor's assessment followed by a physiotherapy assessment is done and then only a plan is made so, see the thing with home remedies is it's like if common things you are doing for example if you are putting icing just for that particular time that is a different story because it's really yeah because therapy is very for example for certain things you need to put warm therapy certain things you need to put cold but if the pain is there if you are not able to do it and you continue to do home therapy and it's not improving then that is not really helpful because ultimately you do not want to reach a stage where things get so bad that even a doctor or a physiotherapist will not be able to do so as i mean for most physiotherapists that i have spoken they are very clear that you should not try to do exercises on your own or without actually being at least on the first visit under the uh, physiotherapist guidance because ultimately you need to understand the exercises we all have muscles and nerves and bones and joints yes. uh, any yes. kind of wrong exercises can have wrong implications so that obviously leads to this so i wouldn't say that directly you should jump into anything it should always be after a detailed assessment because it becomes very difficult to to under to correct something which is over corrected or not done properly uh, any other questions a uh, doctor is there a rule of thumb when you should use a cold compress and when you should use a, a hot compress or is it very complicated no it's not it's not really a rule of thumb you actually have to i mean it's very much condition based so once after a detail assessment is done then only the decision is taken with the for example i would be taking that decision with the physiotherapist who would obviously give the expertise their expertise on it what's your view on masseuse people untrained guys coming to your house and massaging uh, our parents uh, because it they claim that they can relieve pain 
to be to be very frank i wouldn't say that it's medically proven but ultimately it depends on the intensity and what they are doing i mean as i answer uh, miss miss susan now that over correction of anything can be really problematic and uh, it is always better to get yourself assessed rather than directly go into masseus because purely then i mean when things get really bad and there have been lot of cases where it does get bad it becomes very difficult then and the only way out may be surgery or other things because the older person's body is actually quite different and you have to sort of take into consideration the age related changes the intensity in which the massage is done so all those things are very important thank you that was actually very uh, useful any other questions yeah i have a question Doctor, uh, doctor, I just wanted to ask you about. Have you heard about fibromyalgia? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if a person is now, uh, you know, on allopathic uh, painkillers, because there's nothing that you can do about it. Mm. First of all, I want to ask is uh, how does that uh, medication affect the body? and do you feel that going for homeopathy or ayurvedic will help see as far as as far as uh, the medication for fibromyalgia is concerned yes your intensity of pain has to be managed because that is the only way we can go about as far as allopathic is concerned and as far as yeah. and as far as homeopathic and ayurvedic is concerned ma'am my knowledge is very limited in both so i wouldn't okay. be able to tell you whether you should go for that because ultimately what i really believe it is if there is a research papers on every kind of thing then it is okay i mean then it is okay to go for that but the thing is i don't really know really about homeopathy as well as uh, ayurvedic so i would not be able to sort of guide you on that but as far as allopathy is concerned yes medications are there i generally do not advise my patients to be on all kinds of medications at one time purely because we don't really know the interactions the allopathic medications along with the ayurvedic medications and homeopathic medications because ultimately we are and we are making our body endure multiple chemicals so ultimately they are also chemicals so what interactions they have amongst themselves and what interactions they have with the body is very difficult to say so it shouldn't sort of really uh, really get worse than as far as fibromyalgia is concerned yes it's a very painful condition it's a chronic condition and not yeah. all not always you can have full sort of recovery basically you have to manage the pain symptoms yeah it is a it is a long drawn effect it's not sort of yes. a short at all yeah because i suffer from that and i take regularly ultraset in the yeah. mornings and magnanurem in the night so and uh, it's been over a year now that earlier of course i was managing pain trying different kinds of things but uh, i just wanted to say like how like long term effect how these medications going to affect me see the medications obviously depends on as you as you age more maybe they might start affecting but in one year if you have been taking these medications and they have not really shown up a lot of side effects then it shouldn't be much of a problem but but the same thing as i told earlier never try to change any medications or try to jump into anything without being into uh, touch with your healthcare provider because these medications are ultimately chemicals and their interplay with the body is very very important and they can have adverse effects as well so you have to be very careful okay thank you uh, any other questions hello doctor can you hear me yeah. can you hear me can you hear me yeah yeah i can hear you okay you know what i wanted to know uh, about a fortnight ago i got a corn under my foot okay and it was quite painful and for the first time i have managed to get that so i was very worried about it it's very much better now but uh, what is it due to i'm corn is basically just an overgrowth of that particular skin there because of the because of the amount of pressures that actually happens while we are trying to put the feet it happens it's very common it's not it's not saying that suddenly why did it happen and you have to think oh my god no it's quite common but unfortunately it's quite painful some of the corns they heal on their own they can just go off but sometimes you actually need to put that corn cap where you when you put that and slowly and steadily the corn comes out and it sucks out and then it finishes 
or sometimes it, when it is bad then you need to just maybe make a cut which is obviously a surgical thing and then take it off but not always usually they either disappear themselves or they come out and go off but it unfortunately is- they are quite painful in their extreme intensity so that can be very very irritating acha no it has gone off almost yeah. but uh, i was just wanting to know how does it occur yeah basically weight Pressure. bearing chronic Pressure. and okay. the skin actually getting a bit more bit more hard there and it comes out that's acha thank you yeah uh, any other questions regarding chronic pain thank you very much doctor we'll end the session uh, again thank you very much for your time uh, on the chat i have sent everybody uh, doctor prem's email id uh, in case you want to talk to him for a tele consultation uh, uh, he works with justlo uh, and you guys can reach him using an email and then he contact you and you guys can take that forward uh, the recording of this as well as all the others are also available on the tare social website uh, you have the links as you would have got my whatsapp messages please feel free to look at that look at this look at the earlier ones get your clarification there uh, and uh, again looking forward to seeing all of you again next week uh, thank you very much doctor again for all this thank you very much thank you thank you doctor thank you doctor thanks